Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 29. Breaking through the clouds of darkness, black with error, doubt, and fear, lighting up each somber shadow with a radiance soft and clear, filling every heart with gladness that its holy power feels, comes the Christian science gospel, sin it kills and grief it heals. Hymn number 29. Scriptural this morning will be given by Wendy from Georgia. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Thou visitest the earth, and waterest it. Thou greatly enrichest it with the river of God, which is full of water. John. Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, Neither knoweth him, but ye know, know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, 
and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Let us have a moment of silent prayer and then follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth. Is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 185. Master and Lord, tis good to be here, guided by thee to joy-crowned height, where we man's perfect sonship see safe and secure in radiant light. Hymn number 185.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, uh, you can find it on either our website, plainfieldcs.com, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number. So any child anywhere in the world can attend by dialing the number. So if, if you don't live in the area and you do have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll give you the number and your child will be most welcome. Every Wednesday evening at 8.15, we have a testimony meeting where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our meetings and services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. And let's see, we have been busy this week. The Membership newsletter has been printed and mailed to members. Should be getting that shortly. Also, since this is the last Sunday of June and the last Sunday of the quarter, those of you here in Plainfield, if you haven't done so already, pick up your third quarter quarterly and or your July full text we have several websites in different languages, all offering pure Christian science articles, books, music, services. And it's all offered free of charge. Freely we have received and freely we give. And that is why we appreciate those of you who contribute financially to this church. It has a worldwide cause, and we are very grateful to every one of you who supports that cause. And in that light, there is a very good article that is featured on our website, uh, and the article is entitled Supply by Martha Wilcox. We have abundant supply if we know what our supply is and where it comes from. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing from miscellaneous writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Susan from Massachusetts. Page 434. A week ago, a friend wrote to me on business and in the letter stated that his wife had been very ill for six weeks. At once, the thought came, tell her to read the chapter on healing in science and health. In my answer to his letter, I obeyed the thought. A few days after, I had occasion to call, found her much better and reading science and health. They had done as directed and had received the promise. R. New York. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 26 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Christian Science. The golden text is from Jeremiah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? 
The responsive reading is from Jeremiah and Revelation. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayst be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Elizabeth from Georgia will now read. The Bible, Exodus. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Second Chronicles If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Isaiah The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, 
Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Mark The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. And they went into Capernaum, And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And forthwith, When they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. John, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. James, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any sick among you? 
Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Farrelly from Maryland will now read. Science and health. We must abandon pharmaceutics and take up ontology, the science of real being. We must look deep into realism instead of accepting only the outward sense of things. Can we gather peaches from a pine tree or learn from discord the concord of being? The procuring cause and foundation of all sickness is fear, ignorance, or sin. Disease is always induced by a false sense mentally entertained, not destroyed. Disease is an image of thought externalized. Doctors should not implant disease in the thoughts of their patients as they so frequently do by declaring disease to be a fixed fact, even before they go to work to eradicate the disease through the material faith which they inspire. Instead of furnishing thought with fear, they should try to correct this turbulent element of mortal mind by the influence of divine love, which casteth out fear. The sick know nothing of the mental process by which they are depleted, and next to nothing of the metaphysical method by which they can be healed. If they ask about their disease, tell them only what is best for them to know. Assure them that they think too much about their ailments and have already heard too much on that subject. Turn their thoughts away from their bodies to higher objects. Teach them that their being is sustained by spirit, not by matter, and that they find health, peace, and harmony in God, divine love. You say a boil is painful, but that is impossible, for matter without mind is not painful. The boil simply manifests through inflammation and swelling, a belief in pain, and this belief is called a boil. Now administer mentally to your patient a high attenuation of truth, and it will soon cure the boil. The fact that pain cannot exist where there is no mortal mind to feel it is a proof that this so-called mind makes its own pain, that is, its own belief in pain. To the Christian science healer, sickness is a dream from which the patient needs to be awakened. Disease should not appear real to the physician since it is demonstrable that the way to cure the patient is to make disease unreal to him. To do this, the physician must understand the unreality of disease in science. According to both medical testimony and individual experience, a drug may eventually lose its supposed power and do no more for the patient. Hygienic treatment also loses its efficacy. Quackery likewise fails at length to inspire the credulity of the sick, and then they cease to improve. These lessons are useful. They should naturally and genuinely change our basis from sensation to Christian science, from error to truth, from matter to spirit. Physicians examine the pulse, tongue, lungs to discover the condition of matter, when in fact all is mind. If the body is material, it cannot, for that very reason, 
suffer with a fever. Because the so-called material body is a mental concept and governed by mortal mind. It manifests only what that so-called mind expresses. Therefore, the efficient remedy is to destroy the patient's false belief by both silently and audibly arguing the true facts in regard to harmonious being, representing man as healthy instead of disease, and showing that it is impossible for matter to suffer, to feel pain or heat, to be thirsty or sick. Destroy fear and you end fever. Mankind will improve through science and Christianity. The necessity for uplifting the race is farther to the fact that mind can do it. For mind can impart purity instead of impurity, strength instead of weakness, and health instead of disease. Truth is an alterative in the entire system and can make it every whit whole. The ancient Christians were healers. Why has this element of Christianity been lost? Because our systems of religion are governed more or less by our systems of medicine. The first idolatry was faith in matter. The schools have rendered faith in drugs the fashion rather than faith in deity. If sickness is real, it belongs to immortality. If true, it is a part of truth. But if sickness and sin are illusions, the awakening from this mortal dream or illusion will bring us into health, holiness, and immortality. This awakening is the forever coming of Christ, the advanced appearing of truth, which casts out error and heals the sick. This is the salvation which comes through God, the divine principle, love, as demonstrated by Jesus. We classify disease as error, which nothing but truth or mind can heal. And this mind must be divine, not human. Mind transcends all other power and will ultimately supersede all other means in healing. In order to heal by science, you must not be ignorant of the moral and spiritual demands of science, nor disobey them. Moral ignorance or sin affects your demonstration and hinders its approach to the standard in Christian science. God being all in all, he made medicine, but that medicine was mind. It could not have been matter, which departs from the nature and character of mind, God. Truth is God's remedy for error of every kind, and truth destroys only what is untrue. Hence the fact that today, as yesterday, Christ casts out evils and heals the sick. Truth, and not corporeal will, is the divine power which says to disease, peace, be still. When the science of being is universally understood, every man will be his own physician, and truth will be the universal panacea. Let's have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 57. Father, to thee we turn away from sorrow. Thou art the fountain whence our healing flows. Dark though the night, joy cometh with the morrow. Safely they rest who on the, thy love repose. Hymn number 57.
Let's now sing hymn number 74. Go forth and stand upon the mount, for truth is at thy side. The very rocks may seem to break, and earth to open wide. Yet error's tempest and its fire, before that still small voice, retire. Hymn number 74. I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. But unto you that fear my name shall the sons of righteousness arise with healing in his winds. Amen. <laughs> 